Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises are published to our website, aws-dojo.com. Today, we are going to talk about AWS Copilot. This is a service which can be used to deploy containerized application to AWS. So let's get some introduction about that. So AWS CLI, AWS Copilot is a CLI-based tool. So you run this tool using command line interface and it can help you manage the entire life cycle of your application. So all the way to creating your application, to deploying it to a test environment, deploying to the production environment, and then updating your um, releases, all those life cycles of the application can be managed through AWS Copilot. And again, everything you do through a CLI uh, command, and it can really help you automate the entire life cycle of your containerized application, as long as it is getting deployed to ECS and Fargate. So today, as we speak today, this support deployment to Amazon ECS and Fargate. So let's try to understand this thing with a little example. Okay, and again, when you do the exercise at a later point of time, you will yeah, come to know how exactly it works. So let's try to see how does the deployment look like without AWS Copilot. So suppose you have on the left-hand side, um, yeah, one application which for which you have created a Docker file and you want to complete the deployment of this application, you want to deploy this application. So what you will do, I mean, if you're trying, either you are using some kind of automation or if you are trying to do it manually, actually you will first build the image, then you will create um, an ECR repository and a, a container repository in AWS. Then you upload the image to the repository, then you will create a cluster. If you're using for, I mean, you create a cluster manually, if you're creating, uh, if you're using ECS, if you're using forget, then yeah, you don't need to create the cluster because the infrastructure is managed by AWS. Um, then you create a task definition. Finally, you create a service uh, which will simply deploy uh, the, the application based on task definition and will also you know, create a, 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 um, auto scaling and a load balancing, everything on top of that. And of course, if you don't want to do this painful job every time again and again manually, then you will try to create an, you know, an, an CI CD pipeline, which will simply go and automate the whole, uh, all these tasks I just talked about. Again, I'm talking about the task at very high level. Of course, you need to probably manage the VPCs and, and, and those things also, I'm, I'm not getting there, but I'm trying to uh, primarily focus on what tasks you perform inside ECS. So these are the tasks you perform in order to deploy your application um, yeah, uh, without AWS Copilot. So how does the experience look like if you're trying to use with AWS Copilot? So if you're trying to use with AWS Copilot, again, you have um, you need to have a dockerized, uh, a Docker file created, which says, which provides the definition of building your Docker image. And then this you want to deploy either to the ECS or to the Fargate. Then in this case, what you do, you simply run an AWS Pilot command. So you're not going to perform any of those 10 tasks I talked about earlier in terms of creating the image, building the image, and then creating the cluster and task and service definitions. None of those things are required. All you're going to do here is that you are going to run a command for the deployment. And when you run the command for deployment, it's going to throw you certain question in order to understand how you want to configure it. Okay, so for instance, uh, I'll give you some example of the questions here is that, okay, what is the name of the application? Okay, give the name of the application. Um, is it a front-end application or back-end application? So it will determine whether it has to go for a load balancer or it is going to be like a back-end job kind of application. Uh, if it is front-end, then of course, what is the load balancer name you want to give? Okay, which Docker file you want to use? Okay, so uh, it will ask for a Docker file location. Uh, which you want to use for creating the image. Then we're trying to, it will, okay, what is the name of the, you uh, know, tag name, tag, tag name for the image? So it will ask questions like this, depending on uh, yeah, what uh, what kind of deployment you are doing. And then uh, they, it will capture all your configuration details like this, and then it will simply complete the whole deployment in the backend. 
So it will it will every task you saw um, you perform like uh, you know verifying you have uh, required uh, VPCs and then uh, making sure that you um, uh, making sure that um, uh, your your task is created, your service is created, your image is built, it's uploaded. All those things are done behind the scene by Copilot. So that's how it works. And, 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 and today when you do the exercise, at least you'll see it in Fox function. So let's understand some, some, some more fundamentals of AWS Copilot. So as I mentioned that Copilot provides really a set of commands you can use here. And I give you a snapshot of that. For instance, if you want to create a new application, you can use you can use init. If you want to manage your application, application or environment or your service or your task. Any of these things you want to manage, you can use this, this develop command with uh, certain options. If you want to create a CI CD pipeline, build a CI CD pipeline based on your you know, configuration you provide, then you can use this release pipeline thing. And then simply you can use this, this deploy uh, come options to deploy your service. Uh, and then, um, of course, you have, um, if you can use this add on like storage uh, to make it your deployment work with the storage of the database. Okay, so there are many options here you can use. Uh, and when you run these commands, actually it in the command prompt, it asks for your configuration. And it and based on that configuration, it simply automates your infrastructure provisioning as well as your application deployment. And you don't need to worry about uh, those things. So it's really a very sleek way and nice way to either uh, deploy the solution on ad hoc basis, or you can also use it as, a, as a part of your CI CD pipeline to do the deployment. Okay, so few more things. So it is uh, at the time of creating this video, this is supported on um, Mac OS and Linux environment. That means the machine we are running this command has to be either Linux or Mac OS machine. And these are certain commands. I mean, the, the way you download it is that you have to, of course, download it from your repository. And then you simply, uh, yeah, uh, and then once you download from the repository, um, actually you have to uh, give execute permission to uh, Copilot uh, application, and that's it. Huh? Yeah, you're done. I mean, you can see the same way both uh, only the repository locations are different. Um, and then the machine where you're uh, using it, of course, it has to be Mac OS or Linux. Few other than Copilot, it also needs to have few more things deployed there. So it needs to have a Docker uh, deployed, of course, yeah, because it will use that local environment to create a Dockerized image and those kind of Docker image and those kind of things. So it needs to have Docker installed there. Uh, we need to have AWS CLI uh, deployed on on that machine, and you need to have an AWS profile created. So you need to create an, uh, you need to have an AWS uh, IAM user account. And then for that IAM user account, you can generate a secret key and access key. And that you can use here in the profile. And this is the IAM user profile, which, um, which Copilot is going to use to authorize all the calls. So suppose you want to create the stack and, and those kind of things. This AWS profile, IAM profile, should have adequate permission uh, to, to, uh, so that Copilot, when uses that for authorization, is able to create the resources inside AWS for the deployment. So it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is that you need to have a Docker, CLI, and local AWS profile configured. And of course, your operating system should be either Mac OS or Linux, and you need to have Copilot deployed on that. It is one time job. Once you do that, you keep running your commands, your, your, your AWS Copilot commands, and keep deploying your application to AWS environment. All these things you will do as a part of the exercise today. So yeah, you will get a full hands-on experience about it. Few more things. So what are, what are we, okay, what are we going to build today? So what we're going to build today is that we will use a Cloud9 machine, a Linux Cloud9 machine in Woman. Uh, there we'll create a Docker file. Uh, we'll create a very small application. Uh, and then I will use just one command that is copilot init, which is used to create and deploy, create an application and then further you can deploy it. Uh, and then I will simply, in my command prompt, follow you know answer this follow up question. This this copilot raises to me to ask for the configuration detail. We simply answer it, and behind the scene, copilot will go and deploy this whole application to the Fargate. So that's what we are going to do today. 
Uh, again, I'm using just Copilot in it, and then it will use deploy command internally to to do the deployment. But of course, you can. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can explore yourself how the pipeline command and you know, other commands work. It's pretty straightforward, like you will see here today with the Copilot init command. Now. In order to do this, we have an exercise uh, published to our website, aws-dojo.com. And now I'm going to uh, switch over to my website to show the steps involved to explain what you need to do to complete this whole scenario. But again, uh, the URL of this workshop, uh, this exercise has been provided in the description box below. You can access it whenever you want, and you can do this exercise by your own, in your own AWS account, whenever you feel like. Okay, so let's jump to how the exercise looks like. So here we come to aws dojocom where we have published this uh, exercise uh, uh, to use AWS Copilot for the deployment. And these are the steps you have to perform to complete the job. Uh, the first step is pretty straightforward. You need to have an AWS account in order to uh, perform this exercise. And if you don't have AWS account, you might want to use this link to create a trial account. Then uh, we create an IAM user. And again, I, as I mentioned earlier that when you run uh, AWS Copilot with CLI, actually AWS Copilot uses uh, AWS profile and CLI in order to perform the job. Uh, so you need to have an IAM user account created and a profile configured with that so that AWS Copilot can use that for authorization. So first step is to add an add an user which has um, a, a programmatic access. Yeah, uh, we call it say Dozo user, uh, and then we are giving it administrative access rights here. I can I can I can keep it very small and hey, you only have permission to upload to ECR buck. You know, is get any. ECR repository, upload to that, and then you only have permission to um, ECS um, uh, and those kind of things. But for now, I have simplified it by giving it administrative access so that, uh, you know, I can, because it does many things, it creates three bucket, it creates cloud, cloud formation template, it creates load balancer, it creates uh, ECR cluster, task definition, service definition, everything it does behind the scene. So for that, we need to have a user account which has adequate permission to perform this task um, using AWS number back from the AWS uh, Copilot. So we simply create uh, this uh, this account, uh, and then we make note of this uh, access ID and secret uh, key. Okay. Once we have made note of uh, access ID and a secret key, uh, we simply go to um, uh, this. Uh, um, uh, cloud nine environment, so we need to create a cloud nine environment, which we'll use as a machine from where we will create the application and run the AWS Copilot command for the deployment. So we go to the uh, go to the AWS cloud nine console, say we want to create a new environment, uh, give this environment a nice name called say Dozo environment. Then in this case, we are saying that uh, let's okay, I selected a big machine here to be very honest, but you don't need to select a M5 large. I don't know something was happening to me. I selected a big version. You can go for T2 micro. Okay. So let me tell you, you can go for T2 micro in this case. And then we selected uh, Amazon Linux uh, platform over here. And we simply create the environment. So once the environment has been um, uh, created, actually, so you now have got an uh, uh, environment launched uh, under Cloud9, which is a Linux machine, which we are going to use as a machine where we will create the application and also run the copilot command. So let's first configure the environment. So one of the prerequisite is to have a Docker installed. So run each of these commands one by one to install the Docker and start the Docker service. Uh, you can also verify by running the Docker version command to see if Docker has been installed. Then once Docker has been installed, um, we can simply go and deploy AWS Copilot. Uh, and for that, we run these two commands one by one by one to uh, deploy AWS uh, AWS Copilot. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you can run this command Copilot uh, help to, to check if the Copilot has been deployed. Now, uh, I'm not doing uh, CLI deployment here because uh, since it is a Cloud9 machine, uh, it already has a CLI installed into it. Then we simply uh, open the environment and we now try to create a sample application which, will be, which we will deploy using AWS Copilot. So for that, uh, what we're going to do is that we are going to actually um, yeah, start from here. So for instance, we are going to use uh, Nginx image um, uh, and then in, in, uh, so we'll use that base image 
and then um, in that uh, when when it creates that uh, environment engines environment using the base image we simply copy this index.html file into it and expose it over port 80 okay and this html file has been now created over here which is very simple that hey, i'm a simple application file again i am not keep giving focus here on creating a very complex image because my idea is that you have one image and how you can use AWS Copilot to quickly deploy it. So I'm just created a very simple application over here. Uh, and then, yeah, so, so so I simply created an HTML file over here and then we created this uh, Docker file here which says, okay, use the latest of the engines image uh, and then use that as a base image to create an environment and then uh, copy this file, index or HTML file to this, this following location so that uh, it becomes my, uh, my default file here, uh, there, and then expose on port 80. So my application is also ready. Now I'm actually good to go and deploy it. But in order to deploy it, uh, we need to set up the profile. And setting up the profile, if you want to, like if you're using an EC2 instance, for instance, uh, or using a local machine, then you can simply run this AWS configure command uh, to, to set up your profile uh, using the access key and secret key. But this is uh, this is um, a Cloud9 machine. Here, you need to use a different method. And that method is using the export method. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to, so because uh, Cloud9 tried try to use, um, try to use uh, uh, temporary credentials created to perform the job. But when I trying to use it, it was uh, somehow that, temporary credential was getting reset and it was giving me error. Uh, and that's why, I mean, I tried it many times and they said, okay, it's not working. So I said, okay, what's the, what's the way around? So way around was that, okay, let's use a, sex, no, a, a proper profile. And in order to do so uh, in AWS command, and, and so in, in, in Cloud9, you have to use this export method to set the access key and, and secret key. And this is very particular to uh, Cloud9 on Cloud9, but, if you are using again an EC2 instance or your local machine, then in that case you can use AWS configure command to uh, set up your profile. Okay, uh, this this method is particular to Cloud9 only. So then uh, once uh, this one is done, then I have now updated my profile to use this particular secret key and access key. Okay, uh, so this is going to be used as a default profile now uh, for this session. So now uh, the job is pretty straightforward. So my so if you look at that, my application is ready. Uh, my AWS profile is ready. Uh, I have got AWS Copilot deployed, Docker installed, everything is ready. Now I need to simply run Copilot init command to start the application uh, application creation and then deployment. So when I uh, run uh, this command, actually it start asking you questions. So first thing it will ask, okay, what would you like to name your application? I say, okay, name it Dozo app. Then say, okay, can you tell me whether it's a load balanced web app service or it's a backend service? I said, okay, it is a load balanced service. So I select load balanced service and enter. Okay, so can you tell me the name of the load balanced service? I say, okay, it's Dozo, Dozo API. Which Docker file you want to use? In this case, it, it found only one Docker file. So yeah, I, I simply pointed to that and entered that. And then it says, okay, fair enough. Uh, and then based on this information, it starts creating a manifest file for application deployment. So it start, uh, like it will go and build the image and it, it will start creating a, a manifest file, which will say exactly based on the configuration uh, configuration information provided to me, um, uh, how does the, how does, you know, uh, how does the deployment, how would the deployment look like? Okay, and once it completes the manifest file creation, it can say, okay, what do you like to deploy? And at this point of time, you can say, no, I don't want to deploy. I'm okay, I'm, I'm, all I want to do is do manifest file creation and I will deploy later. And then you can use the deploy commands later to deploy the application. But if you want in the same flow deploy, you say, yes, I want to deploy. And so you can see that here, it asks the questions. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, based on that, it created a manifest file and said, hey, do you want to deploy this? And say, yes, I want to deploy it. And at this point of time, it will start creating your deployment environment. And you can see here, it will, it will start looking into availability zones and internet gateway connectivity and uh, public subnet, private subnet, routing table, uh, cluster, application load balancer, uh, linking this to a particular account, all those tasks, it's, it has started uh, doing uh, behind the scene. Um, okay, and then, once it is like, uh, yeah, it will start creating the infrastructure and then it 
further ask you that, okay, I'm going to now upload your image to the ECR registry um, or repository. Uh, what, how do you want to tag the image? And in this case, okay, fine. I mean, you can say latest, you can say version 1.0. In this case, uh, I said, okay, let's tag it with Dozo. Okay, and then I simply gave that answer that, okay, uh, I, I, I gave this reply that I want to tag my image as Dozo, and then it will start completing the deployment job, which is primarily like yeah, pushing the image into your ECR repository, uh, launching the cluster, having the task definition in place, service definition, now all those things it, it does behind the scene. You can really take a coffee break at this point of time and come back and then it will have your application deployed. Once it has deployed the application, it will give you a URI uh, of the application, URL of the application, which you can use to access the application. So for instance, when I completed this deployment for uh, to create this exercise, it gave me this uh, URL back. And when I access that URL, it voila, it shows me my application deployed uh, on, on, uh, on the ECR cluster. So it is that straightforward, guys. I mean, so all you have to do is that, okay, you have an environment configured, up and running, and then you simply create your uh, your um, uh, container application, uh, and then use AWS CLI command. Provide this configuration through the command prompts uh, question questions, and then you have got your uh, application deployed behind the scenes. So it it I mean I will show you the resources, but literally it uses the best best practices uh, to deploy uh, and, and, and the whole infrastructure uh, as well as the application uh, on AWS. So if you want to see, uh, and uh, now, I mean, you can, uh, I mean, there's, there are many things you can do with uh, CLI command, as I showed you earlier, but if you want to see what all it creates behind the scene, just to give you an idea about, you know, what kind of heavy, heavy lifting it's doing behind the scene, actually it, it creates a task definition, it creates the cluster, you can see it creates the cluster, as well as the service definition, it launched the load balancer, of course, that is the part of the service definition, and it also created the ECR images, um, and a repository and uploaded the image to that. So it does many other things behind this, uh, beyond this as well, uh, but you can see that all this major heavy lifting is done behind the scene by this command, which you don't need to worry about, and all these things have been done um, keeping best practices in mind, and again, it up, up, it creates all those things using uh, using um, you know a cloud formation template, so that uh, yeah, it 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 it, it manages the whole stack, the whole deployment as a stack using cloud formation template, uh, so that it can, it can update the environment, it can delete the environment in a, in a, in a transactional fashion. So after this, actually, the exercise is pretty much over. All you have to do is simply go and delete environment because, you, of course, you don't want to pay cost for uh, this whole thing post this exercise. And there are two ways you can do that. Either you can run this delete command over here, but if you face any problem into that, I, I some of the time I, I have seen a problem with this. Um, uh, then in that case, all you can do is that simply uh, go to your cloud formation uh, console. You will see this this kind of cloud formation stacks. Uh, no, uh, simply go and delete the cloud formation stack, and and and, and you're good. And, and post that you you might want to delete the those uh, this cloud nine environment and those users so that your your uh, account is reset back to where you started. So this was all, uh, guys, about the AWS uh, Copilot. Uh, hope you like this video, and if you like, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I create one or two such videos and workshop and exercises every week. And yeah, of course, if you have subscribed to my channel, uh, then yeah, you come to know about that. Um, if you have any feedback, either you can provide me in the comment section in the YouTube channel, or you can click on this contact us tab over here uh, and to provide uh, feedback. Now, there are many other workshops and exercises like uh, I just showed you now, which you can use to learn about, learn about AWS services. Each of these workshops and exercises uh, try to implement certain scenarios, provide you instructions to do so. And when you do so, uh, yeah, of course you will learn about uh, um, using AWS services. So that was all for uh, today, guys. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. Uh, yeah, keep providing me feedback. It really helps me refine my work and content. And stay safe and have a nice day. Bye-bye.